Hey, Forge fans, Anthony Urchioli with you. Jessica Lisi joins us as well. Match in review. Forge FC with a 2-1 victory over Calvary at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. And it, you know, I always say, I think I say every time that it's a huge win for Forge. But this was definitely the, the hugest of... Don't email me and correct me. I know it's not a word. But it was, <laughs> it was the hugest of, of all of all the wins, and I, I don't think I've ever struggled this much to find a singular talking point because this match had it all: uh, red cards, you had the goals, you had the action, and Jess, this was a rare time. You know, with the CPL, whenever Forge plays, especially, and we've seen a lot of Forge this year, they always seem to be playing a team that plays in a low block that kind of sits back and tries to beat Forge on the counter. This was a rare instance where we had two clubs that play very similar attacking styles. And I think it says a lot that neither club changed their approach. They, they, they went out there, said, we're going to try to, we're going to play our game regardless of what the other club did. And it showed because this match had everything. Yeah. I mean, it was very visible that they both, they both had the utmost respect for each other as teams. Um, right. You know, before the match, they showed the two coaches showing each other a sign of respect. So there's definitely, you know, a mutual respect there. Um, they're both great teams. As you saw in the play, it was a super entertaining match to watch. Um, and it says a lot, the fact that they didn't want to change what they were, they were both good at. Um, it works for them. And, you know, Forge has been struggling recently to do what they're good at. They haven't been executing. So to see them come out today and, and get that big win is super exciting. Yeah. So th it was an interesting, so first, I mean, again, there's so much to talk about. So Tristan Henry, um, his 100th match played fantastic. Dominic Samuel, also his 100th match, but that's, they're The forge is going to honor him at a later date. They, they didn't want both have to share the day. So Dominic Samuel's getting his, and he played, um, he played fullback instead of his usual center back spot. And it, it was interesting. And maybe you can shed some more light on this because both flanks forge attacked differently, but there was something on the right side they were attacking. And David Chouanier and Rama were the two kind of manning that flank. And it paid off really Chouanier. They, we've been kind of critical of forge's starts recently, but they started exactly how they wanted to. And of course, it led to the opening goal 10 minutes in from David Chouanier. Beautiful effort. But they, they chose the right side is what they wanted to attack with. And and um, it paid dividends early. Yeah, they came out guns blazing today. You could see their energy. You could feel it right from the start. Um, it was a great individual effort by Chouanier. That goal was just fantastic. He was able mm -hmm. to you know, get around that player, use his speed, and then do what he's great at, and that's finish. He was a great strike of the ball, you know, near post finish, which is not easy to do. Um, so you know, he it was great. He, he did a fantastic job with that. Um, yeah, overall, I would say that they they did a great job at executing going down that right flank. They they really did expose cavalry um, overall on that side. And it was funny because we, you know, I, I've seen Dominic Samuel play play. So I mean, played a hundred matches. So I've seen him so many times, and it's rare to see him play left back. And I think it, maybe it's his stature. You know, he's he's not a tall guy, but he's big. He's built like a truck, and he <laughs> seems suited well for that center back. So to see him in the left back, I, I did question whether he'd be quick enough, and he surprised me. I mean, he has a lot of speed that he's not typically able to show off, um, but he was there. And what they were doing was, you know, Samuel would push up, and Borges would drift into the middle, playing almost like a almost in a 10 spot. Even though he was on the wing, he would drift. And it just tactically, Forge knew exactly how they wanted to attack Calvary, and it, they executed it. And it's, it helps when you're playing at home, for sure. But Forge looked like a club that was motivated to end that losing streak, and this was not a match they wanted to drop three points in, not against Calvary especially. Yeah, I mean, we've spoken so many times about, you know, really enjoying watching Borges play as a number 10. So to see him shift in there and be able to create a lot within the attack is is always is always great to see. Samuel did a great job um, out there on the left, regardless of stature. Um, you know, when you're a great player and you're smart, sometimes speed and athleticism is, is not even a concern. You can outsmart players. And obviously he is very athletic and he is able to do, um, you know, all that, like you said, deceivingly fast. But again... Um, in the case where someone isn't, it's still, you can outsmart your opponent. So he's definitely right. a great player overall um, and, and brought a lot to that position today. I thought he did really well. He's, he's very gritty um, and his, his attitude, he never, he gets knocked down a lot. He was on the floor a lot. Oh, he was tonight. down a lot. Yeah. yeah. He was on the floor in fact, a lot tonight. That, that's a good segue because while you say that, um, 
Bobby Smirnaud has pointed that out. He he put his body on the line tonight. And he gave it his all. And that's what Bobby expects from, from a guy like Samuel. So here's the coach post-match. So as we mentioned, this match had it all. It had red cards. Um, well, I mean, two straight reds. Uh, one was two yellows that led to a red in the 95th minute. And we'll break all of that down. But it is kind of a shame that, you know, a match like this with two clubs that the rivalry. By the way, I do need to point this out. Because every time these two clubs meet, the players, the coaches all kind of say the same thing. Oh, it's just another match. I've been on the sideline many times. This was not a regular match. From the yeah. opening whistle, you mentioned the coach's mutual respect, but the second that whistle went, it was so intense on the pitch, just the coaches on the sidelines as well. And um, after that goal, because you wonder how a team's going to react after they score. Forge, we don't expect them to sit back, and they did not. They continued to press, and um, you know, Calvary played played the same way. Here's Bobby on just his general assessment of the match, which really did have everything. So Forge went into the half uh, with a one nothing lead, and they built on it. 52nd minute. It was Abu Sissoko putting Forge ahead by two. So Forge looking comfortable here. Uh, Calvary, though, made things interesting. Moosey with a spectacular goal in the 63rd minute. Just completely changed. It's funny how one goal, even though you have it. Well, you've said this before, that two two nothing is one of the most difficult leads in the sport, right? Yeah, it absolutely is. It's, it, you know, a lot of times when someone scores that second goal, they sit back, you get comfortable with your lead. When you have a one nothing lead, you know, you're very well aware that this can change at any given moment. It takes one mess up. Um, but when it's a two, two nothing lead, it's the same thing. It takes a team to score one goal and then the momentum shifts. And now mm-hmm. you almost feel like you're chasing, even though you do have that lead because that momentum has shifted to the other team. Um, I do just want to say that Sissoko was solid today. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like he covered every inch of that field. He was all over the place. So, um, you know, Congrats to him for getting that goal because he was definitely well earned. Um, you know, Pasias, it was a great play by him. He was able to draw that man in, play it to Becker, and, and spin out to get that ball again. And then Sissoko with the the rebound. But overall, it's just a great play. But I definitely wanted to, you know, hats off to Sissoko because he was he was great today. Um, he, he was definitely someone that stood out. He's been so good this year. But w- when you talk about a box to box midfielder, is that is that what we're talking about? A player like Sissoko because you have to have an energy level and endurance. He played the full, ended up being 96 yeah. minutes. I mean, that's not easy to do as a midfielder that covers as much ground as he does. No, it's definitely not. Um, you know, a lot of it is obviously fitness and people will say that, but a lot of it is a mentality thing. And I, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I think there aren't a lot of players that are able to do that for, you know, the extent of 96 minutes, 90 minutes, whatever the time may be. A lot of people are only able to give their short period of time because their mentality falls off as the match goes on, whether that's because, you know, your team's up two goals or you're losing, whatever it may be. Um, it's it's definitely a mentality thing. So yeah, he is definitely somebody that embodies that, you know, that box to box midfielder. He definitely has the mentality. You know, it's weird to see Forge sit back into a shell and defend, but they had no choice because in the uh, 70th minute, 
Captain Cal Becker gets sent off straight red. And now it's an interesting final 20 plus minutes because Cavalry pressed and yes, they forged. Did. They made all the substitutions. They used all five. Um, Daniel Crutzen came off, who we do have to talk about. He played 75 minutes. Now, he hasn't played since um, the end of last year. For him to jump in, and he's not just jumping into any kind of match. He's jumping into a match that's high octane, high intensity. Um, I'm going to play you what Bobby said post-match and also what Daniel Crutzen said post-match because this was a case where, and just maybe you can relate to this, when, when you're, if it's been a long layoff and you do come back and you maybe feel a little rusty, the team thought it was best for Crutzen to start rather than be subbed in later on because I think, is it maybe hard to just kind of catch up to the, the feeling of the game? Is it better just to start, quickly get up to speed, and then come off rather than jumping in, you know, mid-match when it's already been played at a high level. Yeah, absolutely. When, you know, when you're somebody who has been off for a while, it is much easier to start off and and get the flow of the game, um, get into it. Obviously, if he was playing poorly and he was the reason for a mistake and a goal, you're able to pull him off and make that switch and you still have Mm. plenty of time to catch up. Obviously, that didn't happen. He was absolutely you know, great today. He was very solid. Didn't look like he had been off. So, um, you know, props to him. He was great, but yeah, it, it is much easier to be able to start when you've been off versus coming into a match. That's such high intensity. Like today would have been, um, to come into that as a sub, you need to bring the energy and, you know, you just have to have a different mentality. And sometimes when you're coming off injury, you have nerves, you have all these things running through your head. You feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Um, whether that's from teammates, because they know you're great and they want you to live up to that standard or it's, you know, it's also your, your own standard. So um, yeah, I would have to agree that it would be a better, it would be a better thing to to start after you've been off for a while versus coming in to be a game changer. Yeah. And I think he, he mentioned uh, in this, yeah, well, I don't have to tell you what he mentioned. We, we can play it. So let, let's start with, uh, with Daniel Crutzen. You know, I had to admit post match to, to Bobby Smirnotis that I, I I forgot how good Daniel and I was embarrassed to admit it, but I forgot how good Kurtzen was. And it's not just his defending, but it's his vision, his ability to make plays from that center back position. And he doesn't need a lot of touches. It, it's very, it's just so much smoother when he's out there. And it's not taking anything away from the center backs that Forge have. It's just a different element they're able to bring out there. And uh, Bobby himself said it after the match that Kurtzen is the best center back in the CPL. Uh, so Forge was forced to defend after that red card to Becker trailing or rather they had a 2-1 lead. So at least they were in position where they could rely on their defense. Tristan Henry was again, amazing in this match. I'm um, just to go through, we didn't really go through the stats here, but possession, as you'd expect, Forge played down a man for an extended period of time. So Calvary did jump out and uh, win the possession battle at 53%. Shot attempts, 11-9 to nine, um, in favor of Calvary. Shots on target, 4-3 in favor of Calvary. So Tristan Henry saw, and these were difficult saves, and um, he made them. And some ones late in stoppage time as well that 
that were able to secure the three points for Forge FC. I the the, the book. I mean, the fouls. Well, we should talk about the cards. I think that's the key here. So the red cards, uh, Calvary had two by the end of it. Forge had one. Both clubs had uh, three yellows. Now, Kyle Becker, this will be interesting because he gets the one match ban. But based on CPL rules, he could be looking at three more as well after that. So not to have your captain through the final stretch here could... We don't know how... I mean, Bobby will tell you there's enough quality players that can step in. But, you know... When you lose your captain for an extended period of time, especially as you're down in a playoff race as Forge is, we'll see how it impacts them. But it, it's not always pretty. So we'll see how that works out. Um, I will say this. At the end of it, I think the frustration from, and you heard Bobby earlier, and maybe Jesse, maybe you can speak to this, but as an official, he an official who knows the league, he, he's officiated plenty of matches in the CPL, you do wonder, though, you know these two clubs are playing. You know it could get chippy. Is there a way to take control of the match early so that it doesn't get out of hand? I mean, can you prevent the red cards early if you're an official by just taking control and maybe, what is it, through warnings, bookings? How, how can yeah, you handle yeah, it? Yeah, I think I think a lot of times when you have a rival match, you're, you're able to see the grittiness and, and that fight in both teams right from the start today was very it was very transparent both teams had you know they 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 didn't like each other not to say Mm -hmm. that they don't respect each other but you know that respect brings out a different sort of competitiveness um they both knew i would even go as far as to say is it just in in the context of on the pitch i mean i these two clubs play like they hate each other i know they don't you know when the whistle's over it's it's done but the way it looked on the pitch and down at field level i mean these are two teams that do not like each other I mean, I throughout my career, I've, I've I've had teams that I say I hate playing them. You know, you're excited to play them. Obviously, it has nothing to do with the you know people on the team, but mm-hmm. in that moment, once you step between those lines, you absolutely hate your opponent. Yeah. You want to do yeah. everything to pick them apart and and beat them. So you definitely saw that from both sides today. The grittiness again was there right from minute one. Um, so yeah, I do think from an official standpoint. If you're calling those, you know, you're giving those warnings and you're calling those fouls, you're not letting little things slide that are chippy um, that will, you know, create retaliation. You saw that a lot of retaliation was a massive thing today. You have one person fouling a teammate and then bam, you have the other teammate stepping in to, you know, come to right. their defense. And and that's how things get out of hand and it becomes, a, oh, okay, well, I'm going to show you next time you get the ball. So it, it just becomes a competitiveness and it gets out of hand oftentimes. So yes, from an official standpoint, he definitely could have spoken earlier and, and prevented those, those red cards um, because he allowed it to get out of hand um, and try to step in a little too late. Yeah. um, And Bobby expanded on that. And he also, it's, you know, we always kind of say Bobby gets it. He understands. and, And he mentioned, it was interesting after the match because he did point out, this league is still considered new, especially with those two COVID seasons sandwiched in between. And if you're a neutral supporter, uh, if you're a Forge fan, if you're a Cavalry fan, I mean, this is reason to to buy tickets and come out to a match or, you know, subscribe to One Soccer. Or, you know, I think the, the, the physicality of it maybe is not something you necessarily want to always showcase. But in, in the context of the battle and where these two teams are in the standings and their history, the batch told it was a great story overall in, in that sense. And so Bobby expanded on the red cards and um, how exciting it was for the fans after the match.
All right, so looking at the table as we are, we are in crunch time now in the CPL regular season. So Atletico Ottawa still in first place with 40 points after 23 matches. Forge, though, now just one point back. They are level on matches. Cavalry, a point back. Forge and um, Cavalry's played one extra match. So Forge in the driver's seat there. We've been talking a lot about Forge's struggles. This did not look like the same club we were watching. And you've said this, I don't know how many times during that skid of Forge that it just did not look like Forge FC. Yeah. This one looked a little more like them. Yeah. I, I, you know, we talked about it quite a few times in the last four matches that they didn't seem to play their style. Their style is very much, you know, the one, two touches, their movement off the ball is, is great. And in those last four matches, it wasn't, they seem to be forcing, they seem to be not dealing with the pressure of Valor, for example, in the last few matches very well. Um, but overall today, I saw glimpses of the old Forge. I would say mm -hmm. that, you know, their DNA came out today and, and it was great. It was from minute one all the way to the last minute, um, whether that was through subs or people who were, were starting the match. Um, you know, I'm, I think their mentality was on today. I don't know if that's because of who the opponent was, if it was that competitiveness, you know, that rival, um, it brought out the best in them. Sometimes it takes your rival to, to get you back on track. Um, and then... It could also be the fact that they were able to connect really early on in the game with Schwanier's goal. You know, it, 10 minutes into the match, you're able to get that momentum. You have that confidence. Okay, we got this. Um, whereas they struggled in the in the past matches to, to really find the back of the goal. So, yeah, overall, I would say that their mentality today, their energy, um, it was it was great. And we've said in the last matches, it wasn't a lack of effort. They did. You could see the effort. They were creating the chances. It just wasn't on. They weren't connecting. So today I felt like everything had come together. Those four matches were just a bit of a rut that they were in. And I, I think they'll they'll go up from here. And, you know, just to, we didn't really go through the three keys to the match because they, they pretty much nailed them all. I mean, it was, you know, to, to make sure that your home field is to make it a place where teams are you know, almost scared to come to like, oh no, we have to go to Hamilton. That's almost, you know, we're almost a guaranteed loss type thing. And right. Forge hadn't been as good at home as maybe I think they, they've been better at home than on they were on the road, but I thought they, you know, they thought they could have been better. And so they definitely set the tone at home here, especially with that early goal. And um, one of the keys was don't think. And to your point, when Forge is on their game, it's just, it's happening fast. It's very instinctual. The quality of the players show is because they're not taking that extra unnecessary touch. They're not overthinking. They're, right. they're just playing. And to your point, that's exactly what it looked like. Yeah. Today, today showcased their talent, um, their individual talents. Again, we keep coming, I keep coming back to Schwan year's goal, but mm -hmm. that really showcases his individual abilities. Um, we spoke about Sissoko being solid, um, you know, from box to box. So overall, I would just say there was a lot of great individual performances, but today you saw that Forge DNA, that team culture really come out. Um, and, and it was, it was a really exciting match to watch. And you know, it may have also, Bobby said that he thought the difference was that this looked like a team that had their backs against the wall. There was a bit of a fight or flight instinct that took over in uh, Forge today. And also, it doesn't hurt that you get Daniel Crutzen back. I mean, that's just to get the morale up after a difficult stretch, a key component to your championship seasons. And for him to return, that, that doesn't hurt either. Yeah, absolutely. He made a big difference today. Um, again, they have been solid overall, I would say, in the back. You know, not to knock anybody, um, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the season, they have been great without him, but he definitely did make a difference. You, you touched upon it. A lot of center backs are able to make those those quick passes, um, but he brings something different. He is able to make those quick passes when he does have the ball and he has space in front of him. He takes it. He's not forcing his decisions and he's not, mm -hmm. you know, taking too long on the ball um, where people are making their runs and then the run's not available anymore. So he's just overall a really smart player, um, really solid defensively and offensively. So yeah, he definitely made a, a big difference and, and added confidence to Forge's back line tonight.
Absolutely. So Forge now, as I mentioned, they head to Pacific. Uh, they have, uh, well, they have, let's do my math is not very easy for me, but they have five matches I'm left. I'm with this one. <laughs> I, five matches left. Majority of those are at home. So they really needed this one to set the tone. Now they're in a really good position going forward as we head down the stretch of the regular season. All right. Jessica Lisi, fantastic as always. Um, I did... I thought I was adequate. Yeah. This is where good. you come. This is I where would, I would. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say you were adequate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sums it up. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening for Jeff C. Your final two, one victory over Calvary at Tim Horns field in Hamilton. We'll talk to you soon. This has been Match in Review with Anthony Arcioli on the Forge Audio Network. For the latest on all things Forge FC, subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.